Okay, in this video I want to talk about Hooke's Law and Elastic Behaviour. They are two separate ideas that are often mixed up together, so I want to explain each one and show why they're different. So, what's it all to do with? Um, commonly you'll learn about Hooke's Law within the context of springs, so I've got a spring over here. Um, <clears throat> and you can do an experiment where you measure the original length of the spring using a ruler uh, and then hang some weights off it, apply a force to it, measure the length of the spring and calculate the extension. Um, so as you can see, if I add one weight to the spring, it extends. If I add another weight, it extends more and so on. And you can plot a graph of, of uh, force and extension. Uh, and if you do that for a spring carefully, you might get something like this. This is an idealized graph, uh, but it gives you an idea of, of what you might get, which is that as you apply a greater and greater force, the extension of the spring increases more and more and more. Um, and this is a straight line through the origin, so this shows a proportional relationship between force and extension. If you double the force, you double the extension. If you triple the force, you triple the extension. Um, but that might not be the result you get if you do this experiment, you might get a different result. If, for example, we replace the spring with a rubber band, do the same experiment with a rubber band, it's slightly tricky to do, but you can do that. Uh, you might get something like this. Typically, the graph uh, for a rubber band is not a straight line through the origin. Uh, it's usually a curve, and it can be complicated depending on the rubber you're using, but it's usually not a straight line. So for a spring, usually you'll get a straight line. For a rubber band, usually you won't. If you keep going with the spring, uh, it's tricky to do, but if you clamp your stand down carefully and do this over the side of the table, then you might get a graph like this, which is a straight line through the origin for a while, and then the line starts to curve. So these are results that you can get, different results that you can get from, from doing this experiment. What's this got to do with Hooke's law, and what's it got to do with elasticity? Well, Hooke's law says, let's do one thing at a time, uh, an object obeys Hooke's law if the extension is proportional to the force applied. So if the extension is proportional to the force applied, that thing is obeying Hooke's law. Um, springs obey Hooke's law up to a point, up to their limit of proportionality. So if you go back to the previous page, this spring obeyed Hooke's law the whole time, and we never reached the limit of proportionality. This spring at the bottom here obeyed Hooke's law up to a point because extension was proportional to force up to a point but then the line started to curve. Rubber bands usually don't obey Hooke's law at all because usually for a rubber band the line is never a straight line through the origin. Um, so this is the idea with Hooke's law. It's all about the proportionality between extension and force. Extension and force are proportional to each other up to a point. Now, what is the limit of proportionality um, for a spring or for anything else? Because springs aren't the only things that obey Hooke's law. Um, a normal bit of wire, metal wire, will obey Hooke's law up to a point as well. So the limit of proportionality is the point where the line stops being proportional, where it stops being a straight line through the origin. It's the point where the line starts to curve. And you can identify this by <coughs> getting a ruler. I'm going to use the straight line tool here. Uh, getting a ruler and putting it up against the straight line of the graph, so that's like having the ruler up against it, and as soon as that line starts to curve, which I think is about here, that is the limit of proportionality. Up to that point, it's a straight line through the origin, and then beyond that point, it's not. So that's the limit of proportionality. Now, the limit of proportionality is also often confused with another idea, which I'll talk about now. So what is elasticity all about? What is elastic behaviour all about? That's a different idea. Um, an object is said to be elastic if it returns to its original size and shape after it is deformed. 
So if you deform something by bending it or by stretching it, and then you remove whatever force is being applied to it, if it goes back to its original size and shape, it's elastic. So rubber bands are often called elastic bands because they do that. Here's an elastic band. We can apply a force to it, deform it, stretch it a little bit. When the force is removed, it looks like it's gone back pretty much to its original size and shape. So it looks like it was behaving elastically. And lots of other things behave elastically as well, like springs, for example. Um, I'll put the spring back on here. I put one weight on it. It deforms, it extends. If I take the weight off, it looks like it's gone back to its original size and shape. So it was behaving elastically. However, springs, as you probably can imagine, have an elastic limit. You can't keep doing this forever. You can't keep putting more and more and more weights onto a spring, and it will always go back to its original size and shape. So up to the elastic limit, the spring will return to its original length when the force is removed. Beyond the elastic limit, the spring will not return to its original length. It will have been permanently deformed. It will have been permanently extended. Now, you cannot find this from a graph. You can't find the elastic limit just by looking at uh, one of the graphs on the previous page. The way you have to find this, <coughs> it's a bit tedious, but you can do it, okay? To find the elastic limit, you've got to put a weight on, take it off, and measure the spring again to see if it has been permanently extended. If it's returned to its original length, which you've already recorded, then you haven't reached the elastic limit. Put another weight on it. Hang the weight from the spring. Take it off again. Measure the length of the spring. Has it been permanently extended? If it hasn't been permanently extended, you have not reached the elastic limit. Put another one on. And so on and so on. It's a different process. It's a process of loading it, applying a force, and then removing it and then seeing if you've reached the elastic limit or not. And at some stage, you know, when you get to, for a spring like this, when you get to quite a few weights, maybe around 8, 9 or 10 newtons, uh, it won't return to its original length. It will have been permanently extended. I can fast forward to that by just pulling on it really hard to simulate putting 8 or 9 or 10 newtons on it. Eventually, when you take... <clears throat> uh, when you take the weights off, eventually you'll reach a point where it won't return to its original size and shape. So whatever weight you applied then, that was beyond the elastic limit. And whatever the weights were before, that was below the elastic limit. So the elastic limit lies somewhere between those two. Um, so you can't find it just from looking at a graph. It's not where the graph starts to curve necessarily. It's usually actually a different point. So the elastic limit is about uh, when when it starts to become permanently deformed. Um, so they are not the same thing. The elastic limit and the limit of proportionality are not the same thing. Try not to confuse them because they're different ideas. Um, the elastic limit is defined here. The limit of proportionality is when the line stops being a straight line through the origin. And just so that you know, for a spring, usually the elastic limit is actually somewhere further up here. So the spring stops being proportional, but still remains elastic for a while and then stops being elastic uh, a little bit further on. So that is Hooke's Law and Elastic Behaviour, two separate ideas. Uh, hopefully that's helped.